in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed father speak to us and grant us grace again oh god the bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord in zion take away shame and reproach from our lives grant us grace to advance intentionally lord in this second session we pray in jesus name that our hearts are opened we have the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles Lord, once the word comes, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let those who have lost things receive restoration. Let chains that have held people release them now. And Jesus be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you and honor you again. Please be seated. Thank you. It's been so inspiring for me, myself, just sitting back and watching the other aspects of the service, the testimonies, and every other thing. It is good that we devote time to spend in the presence of the Lord to grow, to be built, to be established. The Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Then it says that even in old age, they will be fat, and they will be flourishing this final session is one that i believe will inspire and bless us in no small way we run a school of ministry and um it's been on for eight years now and in one of the courses i teach the students on the concept of fulfillment and the Lord just placed it very strongly in my heart to just speak a few words along that line. Because there is only one thing that is greater than success, fulfillment. If you are successful alone and not fulfilled, you are still a failure. Hallelujah. So we're going to discuss fulfillment uh, for a few minutes now this session is divided into two the first half of it will be spent just teaching us further and revealing to us by the Spirit of God the keys that will help us to do exploits and then the second half of it we're going to pray do we love prayer and so we're going to pray and in that prayer by the grace of God we are going to be rebuking chains and destroying everything that is not of God. It is true that we have tabernacle to teach and to learn, but we must give room for the power of God to come and set the captives free and turn the lives of people around and move people forward. You must go forward. And if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand Let me start tonight again? or this session by prophesying to you that in the name of Jesus, the one who died and rose again and the one who sent me here everything that has kept you in the same position i stand by the god of my covenant and i declare whatever it is we scatter it now we scatter it now by the power of the holy spirit please turn it into a prayer in one minute everything that has limited me limited my family 
limited my destiny. I come by the blood of the Lamb. Here at this men's conference, we declare be scattered, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Are there people of prayer here? He must let you go. He says, say unto Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may go and serve me. You are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Psalm 90 verse 12. Psalm 90 verse 12. Please help us media. Psalm 90 verse 12. I'd like us to read this two times. And after we read it, I will tell you a story. And then we'll begin to teach. Are you ready to read? It's projected. If you can see it or find it, then we'll read together, please. One, two, read. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. One more time, please. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. One day... I was watching television quite a long time ago and it happened to be the announcement of the obituary of a man who had lived very old very long and it was just a two or three minutes advert but it struck me so much I had to develop a program that we now have added to the school of ministry from that one encounter. I think the man lived to be into his late 80s or early 90s and then he passed on. For whatever reason, the children were able to preserve as many of his photos as they could find. I don't know how they got photos from when he was a very young man, very young baby, you know, that um, you know black and white and very thick uh, photos and then down to when he was a teenager young adult in his midlife and so on and so forth and they displayed while they were singing I think it was um, I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. That was the song. Some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away and within two minutes they were they did a slide of that man's photos and I was in two minutes I saw the summary of an old man's life from when he was a baby a teenager an adolescent a young man in his adulthood in midlife old very old very very old the final hours on the bed everything was within two minutes and this scripture came to me i said if they had told that young baby that one day he will be an old man in the presence of his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren the question now was the question of efficiency of living how effective did he live his life and i made up my mind i saw in that announcement the deceptive brevity of life that as old as that man is if you live to be in your mid 80s and 90s 
you are considered to be very old in our context today and yet the man died and then this scripture came to me teach us to number our days that as we sojourn and through our pilgrimage in this life we will really know the things that matter and not waste our time I want you to pay attention to everything I will say everything I will sing and everything we will do when it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life to honor you? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will be nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone By reason of ministry, I've had the honor and the privilege to mourn with many families. I've had the honor and the privilege to communicate condolence to bereaved families. And I have learned a few things about the futility of living life without fulfillment. There are four stages. I'm teaching now. There are four stages to every man's life. Every man who is walking upon the face of the earth today, young, old, very young, very old, regardless status, regardless whether you are educated or non-educated, whether you are a Christian, Muslim, or anything in between, male, female, black, white, from whatever region, every man under the sound of my voice will have to go through four stages of life. And every one of these stages has an expectation from God and from destiny as far as exploits is concerned. Your ability to maximize these stages of life is what will ultimately culminate into what you call success, fulfillment, exploits, and impact. When you talk about the concept of being impactful and doing exploits, your entire lifespan, what you call lifetime, what you call destiny. Destiny means your destination in Christ. Write this down, please. The unit of destiny is time. The unit of destiny is time. That means every man's destiny is a measure of time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving a part and a portion of your life and your destiny to. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving your destiny to. Hallelujah. So when it says teach us to number our days. There are times that you can lose things. There are times that you can lose people. But you really lose when you lose time. Please pay attention. Through the pandemic there are people and companies and corporations. And historically speaking. 
there are people who have lost money there are people who have lost spouses there are people who have lost opportunities and strangely so they were able to recover back like job in the bible 42 and verse 10 of job it says and the lord restored the fortunes of job when he prayed for his friends and all his friends family and acquaintances who had left him they returned back and all of them brought a portion of money and gave him the later part of job's life was restored but there is one thing that when you lose you have really lost time so it says teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom now please pay attention i said there are four stages in every man's life stage number one is called the morning stage of your life morning from the word good morning morning m-o-r-n-i-n-g the morning stage of your life this represents the first 25 years of every man's life the morning stage of your life represents the first 25 years of your life From age 0 to age 25 is the morning stage of a man's life. Another word for it is the learning stage. This is the stage where you are given room to prepare for destiny. This is the stage of your life where you can make mistake and life will forgive you. It is expected that at the first 25 years of your life certain things should have been in place under normal circumstances within the first 25 years of a man's life it is expected that you should have found salvation in the lord jesus christ it's expected that you should have discovered purpose and destiny it is expected that you should have gone through the system that educates your mind 25 years under normal circumstance is enough to give yourself the basic requirements in terms of education. Under normal circumstances, it can also be expected and allowed that within the first 25 years of your life that you are already supporting a family. Please pay attention. Are we together? It's called the morning stage of your life. those who make impact those who excel in life and etch their names in the sands of time are usually men and women who begin preparation for destiny early can i tell you this a young boy who gives his life to jesus christ say at age four or five has the opportunity to go to a good school early has the honor of being mentored by a good pastor godly responsible parents and has the opportunity to be cultured into greatness you cannot compare the result of that person with someone who will get born again say at age 40 yes god restores but time would have gone are we together this is a message and this level may not be applicable to me if not all of us here but i can tell you there are people within your care who are coming so there is a portion of this message that is not for you you must take this message back and call your children and all who are within your care and say in this men's conference i found a message that you need the learning stage the morning stage like you see the bible or geography or at least that as we know tells us that the sun rises in the morning once it is night you begin to see the breaking of day it looks like it's not quite clear but eventually the sun begins to rise the first 25 years of your life please look up the most trouble in people's lives starts from this time most carelessness god forbid but a child who becomes a trouble and a nuisance to society it is at this stage of the life that the devil captures them occultism all kinds of decadence starts at this stage of life 
Lamentations 3 27. Please give to us. Lamentations 3, let's pray, please. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 27. The book of Lamentations. Please read with me if you can find it. Now that it's projected, if you can see it. Ready? Together, let's read. One, two, read. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. The yoke of destiny. The yoke of prayer. If you find a man of God who is vibrant and serving God, he utilize the morning stage of his life in fasting, in praying, in discipline, in diligence. Let's look at the life of Jesus. At age 12, when his colleagues and contemporaries were running around like young men who were just getting into teenage, Jesus was at the temple learning and preparing for an excelling life. Hear me. If you miss the first 25 years of your life, call the morning stage of your life, then already you are behind time and you must obtain extra grace from God to catch up in life and destiny. Are we together? That leads me to the second stage of life. It's called the afternoon stage. The next 25 years of your life. From age 26 to age 50 is the afternoon stage of your life. Please write it down. From age 26 to age 50 is the afternoon stage of your life. The sun shines brightest in the afternoon. That means this is a stage of maximum kingdom impact in terms of destiny. You have the most agility in terms of physical strength to do all that you have to do for destiny. You are a man of God. This is a stage where you have the strength and the energy to travel around the world preaching the gospel. You are a businessman. You are a politician. You are a leader. This is the, strength, the stage where you find strength. It's a state of execution where the things you have learned the first 25 years of your life, you now have an opportunity to live by those values, live by those principles. Are we getting blessed? That means a man who gets born again at age 30 or 35, he may still deceive himself that I am a young man. But as far as the unit of destiny, which is time is concerned, time is already against you. Because it takes time to know God. It takes time to learn the word. It takes time to build a prayer bank that your destiny will feed from. It takes time to build relationships. There are people today who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, who are still going around saying, I still have time. I still have time. No impact. You're not changing anybody's life. There is nobody who is rejoicing because you are alive. The afternoon stage. I must walk the works of him who has sent me while it is day. Why? For the night cometh. Not may come, it will come. Are we still together? Find out most of the people who made impact in history and even in the history of our nation. Find out those, most of those who led during the military regime, most of them led as a 30 or 40. They were already in the helm of affairs. Do you know there is a spirit in Africa that we must cancel? The spirit of lateness. It, it looks like it's a cause when you achieve things early. If a young man builds a house at 23, people say, where did you get the money from? If a young man is able to raise people and bless people early, it looks like there is a cause. We break that cause in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you have seen, please, I'm not getting you emotional, 
But some of you here are parents. How many of you have seen young men in their 40s, 45, still stay with their parents and inconveniencing them and believing they are entitled? A 45-year-old man still calling himself a child. Running back to parents in old age. These parents are having their pension, trying to live their lives, and here comes grown adults who believe their children. Let me tell you where that error comes from. The error comes when we begin to give children a mindset that you are still small. Anybody, this is my definition of an adult. An adult is anybody who has his mind developed enough to think make decisions and suffer the consequences of that decisions in my world that is an adult an adult is not one who is 18 years the moment you sustain the ability and the intelligence to make decisions that have consequences and you are matured enough to face the consequences you are an adult this idea of letting people know you are a last born you are a child you are a child 40 years you are a child 50 years you are a child is what makes people to continue to grow and yet they are not productive if i'm offending you i'm sorry but if you are with me say amen are we together the afternoon stage very quickly let me talk about the next stage it's called the evening stage the morning stage is the stage of preparation. The afternoon stage is the stage of execution. The evening stage represents the next 25 years of your life. From 51 to 75 is called the stage of legacy and consolidation. The third stage, which is evening, at this stage, the sun is already going down. It's called the stage of legacy and the stage of consolidation. From a human and a biological standpoint, from 51 years down to 75, you may not have the kind of physical strength. You may not have the zest, the physical energy that a young man would have it is expected that at that stage of life you should have spent your life impacting your world blessing humanity it is at this stage you begin to build institutions that preserve your values and outlive you that is the stage where you begin to document your persuasion it is expected that at that stage you should be so successful you can now turn back from the lens of your experience you can begin to mentor the younger generation coming showing them the pitfalls the things that you saw the mistakes you made allowing them to see your scars so that they can correct their ways here's how it works please look up young people have time but they do not have wisdom and experience so they waste time old people do not have time but they have profound wisdom and experience mentorship becomes that platform that adds wisdom to the time of the young man are we learning one day many years ago i saw an old woman very old woman and she was carrying you know a stacks of firewood very long wood and she lifted that thing and put it on her head and the woman was walking very old woman looking wrinkled and tired and i asked a question where are her children where are these mama's children that will allow the mother in old age It is not a good thing to be in old age and turn back and there is no shoulder that you can lean on because everybody you raised was a failure. Everybody you raised became an amber. 
everybody you raise could not live a meaningful life. Somebody shout, God forbid. Shout it one more time. May God forbid it. There are people today, it's not old age that sends them to their grave. Depression and pain as they watch their children. And they said, I labored, I sent you abroad, I sent you everywhere. I did the best I know to do. While I'm speaking, there may be some of you right now who are going through this pain because your children currently, biologically, or those under your care, may be a description of the least that I'm stating. Find comfort. We are going to pray. We will ask for the mercy of God to invade the, everybody's home and correct anything, that any tree that has not been planted by God, it must be uprooted in this conference. We are discussing the stages of life. The morning stage, first 25 years of a man's life. The stage of preparation, the stage of mistakes, the stage of learning. The next 25 years, 26 to 50, the stage of execution, the stage of maximum impact. The evening stage is the stage of legacy and consolidation. It is expected that at this stage you would not be alone because you would have raised many people. You would have raised people who become extensions of your ideologies. You would have raised people who become extensions of your convictions. You know you are a leader when someone is following you. And the key to commanding followership is influence. The key to influence is the results, the consistency of results that you produce. Which shows us the excellency of your convictions. The final stage is called the night stage. The night stage is anything from 76 years until the day that you transit out of this world. From 76 years is called rest, is the night stage. Night does not mean you are dead. Anything from 76 years, you should have given the world everything that you were sent to do according to God's design if you utilize your time well by the time you clock 76 and further you should have given your all and your best to creation God now gives you the honor to turn back and reap the fruits of your investment can I tell you this respectfully speaking and with every sense of honor and regard every one of us seated here under the sound of my voice belongs to one of these four categories right now and the Holy Spirit even as we seek to do exploits is helping us to assess our work if you are between 0 to 25 what have you done are you spending time learning or you're allowing the devil waste away your destiny. Most people receive Jesus Christ very late in their life. And they don't have the time to learn and make any impact. Most people discover purpose late. If at all they discover it. They are unable to do much. Why am I sharing this with us? Because impact is a product of time and is a product of destiny. And we must obtain grace from God to know what stage we are in now. So that if you wasted the first 25 years of your life and maybe the second stage of your life, you can use this third stage and obtain grace from God and catch up. Restoration is a possibility. Are we together? Yes. Now, can I use any two of you? Come, my friend, come. Let me use this gentleman. You come, you come, please. Quickly, just come, stand here and stand here. Everybody, please watch. My friend, you stand here. Let's assume that this man is 45 years. Everyone say 45 years. 
let's assume this one is 21 years everybody say 21 now assuming they are friends two of them are friends for whatever reason this young man has an opportunity to be lazy or serious he can play games with his life he can still repent he's still within the first 25 years but this our man here is already 45 years he has already missed and even wasted a first portion of his life do you think they should behave the same way who is in a more urgent situation so by the time this one is hanging around with friends just laughing away his destiny from morning till night is it wise for this man to join him in the name of relationship this one already has probably four children already grown no bills for their destiny he's making a mistake those children are about to be armed robbers because of pressure this one is still battling with his studies he will get to campus and meet a fellowship four square there he will give his life to jesus and repent before graduation he will become a responsible man but this one already there is already an emergency this one is not yet married he has the opportunity to correct mistakes this one already has a wife and children who should be more serious about destiny and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you when kofi annan was u.n secretary general he made a statement during children's day he said do not allow children suffer the consequences of the carelessness of their parents some of us with every sense of respect and regard when we were at the morning stage of our lives we were not even born again we had not met jesus we were still in idol worship living in sin living in all kinds of things i'm not here to condemn you no but i'm to show you the urgency of the moment if you get born again at 40 it will take another five to six years under proper mentorship to understand the ways of god if you happen to stay in church and you are under a sound pastor before you begin to learn on prayer on fasting on giving on responsibility it takes time to learn these things why am i teaching you this because there are some of us with every sense of respect who are afraid of disciplining our children for many people we feel and and with every sense of respect and regard have you paid attention to our teenagers at the level of disdain they have for the things of god you mentioned God among teenagers and they push you away all they want is apps phone internet social media am i saying it is wrong no but i am telling you if there is no restoration of a structure of godliness and discipline one generation of neglect is all it takes and will lose everything we are labored for you see these are young teenagers in church while a service is going on someone is even crying they are there um, um, what they call that thing they are, they are now you know sending a text oh i am this i am that snapping themselves there has to be a restoration because they are wasting the time and can i encourage us by the spirit of god let me encourage every parent here if the only thing you give your children is education and money you did not bless them give them jesus give them morals don't just give them money give them what made you you don't just give them a car and a phone don't just send them abroad give them the discipline and the value and the traits that made you exceptional if that's all you give them and you do not give them money you give them everything 
Do not allow the pressure of society to come upon you to say, what are you giving your child? My own child is driving a Jeep. Your own child is walking a foot. Their spirits and their minds are the most important components to their success. You can give an irresponsible child. Look at what happened to Solomon. His father labored and gave him something free of charge. Because it was so free, he became so hedonistic. At the end of Solomon's life, he was already a, a depraved man. He wrote songs of Solomon as a man who had fallen. Everything my eyes saw I wanted, he said. At the end of his life, here was his conclusion. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. When Solomon died and his son Rehoboam became king, elders came and met him and said, you are a small boy, but let's talk to you. Your father oppressed us. Can you reduce it a bit? He listened to the elders and went and called his peers. And the peers said, punish them. May God grant grace that every man's child here will become a reason of consolation when you are old. Let me tell you this. Discipline does not kill. Discipline does not kill. For as long as they are under your roof, they must have your God. For as long as they are under your roof, this is not abuse. We need to be careful what society defines as abuse. You cannot be under my roof and not serve my God. Everybody under my roof serves the God that I serve. A young man cannot return back home as a teenager by 1 a.m. in the night. Open the gate and enter and, and he has friends speaking outside. My father is a rich man. Is he responsible? 31st December, I was in Joss. And my younger brother was not feeling too strong. And so I have a brother, an elder brother, a cousin. He's a consultant gynecologist. And so he just quickly went to a pharmacy. I was driving myself, 31st, just to get some injections or so, and then to go and treat him. And I sat inside the car so that he would go and get it. I said, if I come out and they know I'm the one, they will mob me in this place. So let me remain quiet inside the car. And I saw, I saw some young people. I thought they were going for crossover, like a crusade. They were, at least without exaggeration, they should not be less than 300. And I saw these people moving around and tears began to come down from my eyes. Over 90% of those people, now I'm not here to condemn, no. But if you see your child in that state, you will start crying. And I told myself something. I said, out of these people, by the time all the elders who have values and character pass on, these are the ones that will be left. What kind of discipline will they give their children? Respectfully speaking, let me tell you this. This is the mistake of the West today. In the 60s and the 70s, when the power of God was moving strongly across the West, they had mothers who were women of prayer. Even though they were not so educated, they loved God. And Satan tried to bring those people down. When he found out he could not bring them down, he gave up on that generation and he came back to grow with their children. They made one mistake. Remember when Pharaoh, Moses, advocated the exodus of the nation of Israel. He said, you can go but leave your children behind. Moses said, no way. All of us will go together. The West today, with every sense of respect, the little children of yesterday are the presidents of today. So they can throw God out of schools, throw God out of everywhere. Because you see, whoever grows with you is the one you will be loyal to. As for me and my house. Someone prophesied, say as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Say it with intention, as for me and my house. Make up your mind that as you return back home by the grace of God, call for a family meeting and tell your children, we are going to be intentional about loving God in this family. We are going to be intentional about our spiritual life. 
Let it be that I taught you the ways of God. If you make up your mind to ignore and reject God, then let it be for you. Jesus in John 17 said, All that you have given me I have kept, and none is lost except the son of perdition. Can I tell you this? Please write this down. Let's define fulfillment as I attempt to round up. Thank you, sirs. Fulfillment is defined as the satisfaction. Please write it down. And if possible, underline the word satisfaction. Fulfillment is defined as the satisfaction derived from knowing. The satisfaction derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively. Fulfillment is the satisfaction derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively. Serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. The fulfillment derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively, comma, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. That is the definition of fulfillment. I am fulfilled only to the degree to which I know that I have lived my life effectively. I have transitioned across these stages of my life morning preparation afternoon execution evening legacy and consolidation and rest if i know that i have transitioned effectively using my life my wisdom my talents to first serve the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity with the gift and the grace god has given me the name given to that satisfaction is fulfillment Let me tell you sincerely, success in itself does not bring fulfillment. There has to be satisfaction that money cannot buy. There has to be a satisfaction that awards cannot buy. I submit to you, people of God, by the grace and the privilege of God, I look at my life today and with every sense of humility I can bow my knees to the God of my salvation and thank him and I can say I'm living my life effectively I wake up for a reason and I go back to bed for a reason I thank God for the privilege of transforming a generation I thank God for the privilege of revealing Jesus someday if Christ tarries we will not be here but we will live with honor and we will live with pride today a, my great mentor, Miles Munro, he's gone to be with the Lord, but he's still alive in us. Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. This is a call. For some of us, it's a caution. One more time, for some of us, it's an encouragement. For some of us, it's a drive to move forward with our lives. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. What is the wisdom there? To take cognizance of your days and the passage of time. That one day, we may not be here again if Christ tarries. We must begin to build systems and structures that will outlive us. This is more than just living real estate. Thank God for real estate. Thank God for all of these things. But the greatest legacy that you leave is the value system that enthrones Christ. A value system that produces responsible people. That is a legacy indeed. Many have left money. And when they transitioned and left, they left children and relatives who fought over that money, killed themselves. Many have left accolades. But the greatest legacy that you can leave the greatest legacy you can leave is not a will that shows that they should occupy your estate when you are not there it is a legacy of godliness the legacy of discipline inculcating values that become an extension to what you represent I round up with this this morning, the Lord, again, in addition to our exploits, is calling us 
that if our life is only if our hope is only in this life the bible says we are of all men most miserable we have to begin to live number one with eternity in view but number two with succession in view are we together let our children be able to tell us tomorrow thank god for daddy that someday when we are out of the shores of this world we can look at our children when we stand before jesus and say the same way we celebrated ourselves don't be with your children at home and then when you are in heaven you see them in hell and they say daddy i would have come to jesus if only you told me you were busy around trying to look for money it is my prayer that as I stand before him, I will not stand alone. That I will see a multitude of people who came to Jesus. And here's what they will tell you. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. It is time to think about our lives. Let us think about how we are living our lives right now. Ask yourself a question. The way I am going about my life, will my children be blessed? My final words for you in this session and this conference, live by three principles. Please write it down. Number one, the fear of the Lord. You want to do exploits in this kingdom, you must be governed by the fear of the Lord. It's called Yirat Adonai, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the spirit of reverence. The fear of the Lord. Number two, conscience. You must live by conscience. As you treat your children, as you treat your workers, as you treat your subordinates, conscience. Number three, a sense of posterity. You must live by these three factors if your life is to be efficient. Again, I repeat, number one, you must live by the fear of the Lord. Number two, you must live by conscience. Number three, you must live with a sense of posterity. The man you ignore today because he's poor and relegated to the background may be the man in old age who will help you and hold your hands the child you may be insulting today because he's not doing well in school may be that rejected stone that in old age will stand by you and remain with you is somebody ready to pray so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom please rise up on your feet For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Now, I know that this is a gathering of men. But please allow me to make a very serious call right now. I believe that there are men of excellence, men of valor who are standing here. And they are saying, Apostle, hearing you speak alongside the other speakers, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me. I have made mistakes with several stages in my life. I want to get it right for my sake, the sake of my children, the sake of my children's children. You may be here 
and you were invited for this conference but you've never truly made Jesus Lord of your life I assure you time is passing number two you may be here and you have given your life to Jesus Christ but in all honesty the way you have been living your life you know that this is not a legacy enough for children we are a family of faith wherever you are give me the honor of praying with you before I speak over everyone and we are done please wherever you are we have two minutes I will count one to five I like you to honorably leave your seat and just come and stand in front of the stage here and I want to pray with you wherever you are run like there's fire on the mountain don't come looking at me come to Jesus Christ one I'm yours I'm yours I'm, I'm yours, yours forever I'm, I'm yours I'm yours. yours cry before your maker I'm while you stand here have mercy upon me oh God yours, for the sake of my I'm children yours. let me not leave I'm a legacy yours. that destroys my children I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours my life is yours is yours Ask of me whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Oh, there are men who want to surrender to Jesus. You are not the only head of your house. Christ must be the head of you to be an effective head. Lord, I have tried. I have tried. I'm seeing a repetition of what I complain about for my father. My children keep complaining about me. I know something is wrong. I take responsibility in this conference. Are you praying? Everyone, please, let's join them as we pray. Just spend two, three minutes alone with God. Alone with God. We are not praying as a crowd. Every man before his maker. Lord, search my life. The way I am living, transiting through these stages of my life. The morning stage, the afternoon stage, the evening stage. Did I maximize my morning stage effectively? Did I maximize my afternoon stage effectively? Am I maximizing my evening stage? Do I have a legacy that I can give generations to come? Please pray. Let's cry before the Lord, our maker. One, two minutes and we're done. We are making commitments before the Lord. Four square, you are man of excellence. At the end of your life, there are three things that matter. Your relationship with Jesus. Your relationship with your family. And the efficiency of your fulfilling destiny. Hallelujah. Now please listen to me. Please look at me, everyone, especially for those of you here, young and old, I respect and I honor you. I'm going to separate you into two categories. Those who have never given their life to Jesus Christ and are saying, Apostle, I want you to lead me to Jesus Christ. Please move to my right, which is your left. Just right here. Move here. And then the remaining people are like you to move here. Please quickly, let's celebrate them as they do. If you are in that category, just remain there where you are. All those who are giving their lives to Jesus, can you move here? Just move here, let me be with you. Every man here, we are going to sing one song. You will hear me sing it once and you will join me. Let it be a pledge that for the rest of my life, I will be a successful man, but I will not be successful alone. I will not only give birth to children and run a family, but I will lead them to Jesus in my lifetime. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back are you ready i've decided i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back though men forsake me still i will follow no turning back no turning back though men forsake me still i will follow no turning back no turning back Pray this prayer with me. If you are making Jesus Lord of your life, and those who are following online or will be listening to this by way of broadcast. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.